Welcome to the Printcast Roundtable for August 24th, 2013, a weekly casual show where we talk about what we've been up to and the various gaming stuff that's happened over the last week. We're your hosts for this week. I'm Chris. This is Grover. Hello. And he's a little caught up in, in, in allergy season, so... Don't mind the hacking and uh, your death gags. And some internet troubles, too, so he may sound a little different. I probably sound different, too, because I'm on my work computer and using a very expensive mic because the last couple of episodes, I've noticed my S's are really painful to listen to, so... And you'll notice Mike is missing. That's for two reasons. A, it's his birthday. And B, there's some family issues that's kind of keeping him busy, too. But uh, so we wish him the best and a very happy birthday. I bought him something for him. It uh, allows us to have our birthdays off. Actually, no. <laughs> I keep working my birthdays. And I think you did, too, didn't you? I don't uh... know. Not on the I show. I think I exploded, but I'm pretty sure it was my fault. Oh, it's hard telling sometimes. But in the background this week, you'll see more of those Kickstarter projects. Check out the links below if you're curious about any of them or want to help fund them. Most of them are up to date. You'll notice a Awesome Knots update that they're using Kickstarter for to add some more characters and a new stage and such. And also I've added a Godzilla-like board game that looked kind of curious for something different to look at in the background. And our game news may actually be part of the round table this time because our man's short, so this show's going to be even shorter than usual probably and quite honestly i could use a little bit of a break from all the animating stuff that comes along with the printing cast news so it would be easier just to throw up a little window with the videos that we're talking about in the corner somewhere or something doing the rest of this well, we'll see especially if grover's internet can handle it at the time being he's still around so what have we been playing this week grover i have been playing civilization 5 as usual i am now getting familiar with immortal level to the point that it's actually becoming not as hard as it was which i find i'm finding credit because when i first started immortal i was like there's no way i will ever adapt and now i've adapted to the point that it's just like the other levels i start understanding how the AI behaves at the level and everything becomes trivial <laughs> i have two of the five victories i i am trying to figure out culture in the game. The culture victory in the game is completely foreign to me now. I have never won a culture victory since Brave New World, and I have to learn how. It's funny, because I go play with my buddy Nil on Prince level, and it's it's pathetic. There is no challenge. And I am basically snatching every single every single wonder, and uh, well, it was funny, because earlier, uh, Nil was going to uh, send a humongous army at me, and you know, I asked him, what, what was the army? And he was just a bunch of composite bowmen, which for a couple months ago, that would have been terrifying, and I would have probably just quit right then. But now I'm just like, oh, but you could pause the Bowman. Uh, did you have any melee units? And he was like, uh, no. I was like, yeah, I would. You would have never touched a single city. You'd just been wiped out. But yeah. And then I was, I, I played some Minecraft. Minecraft beat the beast, uh, the unleashed version. I consider it better than Ultimate other, because of the fact that it doesn't have the damn great tech. Which, although it adds a lot of stuff, it, it adds difficulties that are absurd. I mean, I want added difficulties. I like it to be a little harder. That's why I play hard mode all the time. Adds a little challenge. But these are not adequate difficulty enhancements. These are absurd. I don't want to play Minecraft for a couple hours doing one single thing. <laughs> And not is, accomplishing my goal. Isn't Greg Tech the one they took out and then there was such a demand they put it back in or was that a different... Yeah, Ultimate, they put it back in. The Greg Tech guy decided, I know, I'll make everything even harder. <laughs> and at least they took it the hell out again. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, this is absurd. And you know, they always tell, well, you can customize it. Well, damn, man. I mean, you know how hard it is to customize all that stuff? That's insanity. <laughs> it's just, I like Greg Tech. I like all the stuff yeah. it adds, but I don't I like the absurd difficulty. Mm -hmm. If they could cut That's the requirements by 50%, I would consider it's efficient. I'm not talking about, you know, have to get plutonium and have it to break down stuff to get little tiny bits of stuff that you have to get a whole bunch of. That's not a problem. When you want me to get 25 stacks of said stuff to make one yeah. thing, and I need 20 of those too, that's when I'm just like, what the hell? So, uh, yeah. Then I played Sims 3. Uh, the starter pack dragged me back into the Sims series, and I uh, honestly have decided that every month I will buy another expansion until I own all the Sims 3 expansions, and just in time for the damn Sims 4. <laughs> Which I'm just don't understand. Why? I don't want a reboot already. It's only been three years. I do like some of the stuff that they're doing with it, though. I have to admit, it. there's a lot of work, especially with the house building, that whole thing, the buildings and stuff. That that looks pretty nice. That is true. I do need to go look at Sims 4. I, I know nothing about Sims 4. It I looks know that very similar. But the major additions is the mouse controls so much of your customization 
Legend now, and Sims have actual emotions. They show some emotions, but they don't show it. They don't like sit there and laugh and stuff. Mm-hmm. They see it was their boost. Like recently, they, they, if they have a kid, they get a had a child afterglow for like seven days as a bonus. Uh, now, what about you, Chris? Where did you play? Well, I beat Medal of Honor, and you remember I said it, I put in about four or five hours into it. No, I, I apparently only put in about two and a half because I beat it about an hour after that. Why? It took me over a day to download a game that I beat in four hours with a very disappointing finale to boot. So I can see why that game didn't do very well. And apparently Warfighter didn't do much better. So, uh, guys, what are you doing over there at EA? A couple of new Congregate games. Uh, Sacred Citadel. Uh, I finally got Origin set up and going because of all those games. I completely forgot that I had Command & Conquer 4 on there. I don't even oh, remember wow. how I got Command & Conquer 4 on there. Speaking of which, I might as well throw that in there, that uh, Command & Conquer Red Alert 3 Uprising and the old, old school populace is part of the Humble Bundle from EA now. So if you haven't got it yet, there's even more reasons to go grab it. But uh, let me see. The majority of my gameplay has been on King's Bounty of the Legend, and uh, I finally got Burnout Paradise from that same EA bundle downloaded, and I've been playing it. It's a little different than the old games, because the old games were like, you pick your race, you do it. This one is more like you wander around and you stop at stoplights to pick your race, or you run certain cars off the road, and you get those cars in your garage, or you do stunts around this. It, it's just one big open map, which sandbox games are kind of popular, so I understand it. It's just... mm. And Minecraft, I have finally restarted Minecraft. Mesa updated that at that graphics pack so I could finally go back and start fixing the old one that I had. So all my work on my gigantic city island thing I can get back onto. Ooh. Uh, I've put a couple hours into it, I think. I actually got it started before last printcast, but I completely Did you like the horses? I haven't seen one yet. You haven't seen one yet? Oh, you need to go, you need to probably expand or something, which you don't want to do. I was mostly trying to figure out how to do more detailing on my buildings because I was just looking at them and seeing how just flat and boring they were. They need some personality. Yes. So I've played a lot. I've probably put in 15, 18 hours of gameplay this week, which is kind of a first in a long time. But the disappointing thing is, not one bit of it was for Pony Prize. <laughs> I need to get uh, all those printy plays before people start missing them. I know. I really need to go to my YouTube again. I did Tropico, then I began some Sim stuff, and I just kind of abandoned it. Mm. Maybe I'll get to DD, and then when I get really good at DD, I could do uh, YouTube with DD, because that's what people want. They don't want this Prince crap. They want <laughs> DD playthroughs. They either want to see you succeed against the impossible or fail miserably. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what they want. They want pro games. Or are you just really entertaining? Yeah, be really entertaining. Me, entertaining. <laughs> and speaking of entertaining, I was not really entertained by GamesCon. I haven't seen all of the conferences and all of the, the stuff yet, but it's kind of meh. Yeah, I didn't really see anything that, you know, blew me away. I was just like, oh boy. I think part of the problem with a lot of these shows used to be all of these companies would wait to unveil at these shows. Now they leak stuff, they show trailers, they show sneak peeks, they release stuff on blogs, so the information's much more readily available, especially since the internet's getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah. But by the time the shows come along, everybody knows everything, and I think that's what happened to Gamescom. It's just like, we know, we're just trying to get more information at that point, and the information's either overwhelming or underwhelming, or it's just meh. <laughs> more more of what we already know. And we'll get into the rest oh, of that. And I would have been playing Final Fantasy XIV this weekend, but I couldn't figure out how to get the early access going, so I'm locked out until the 27th for everybody that was allowed and then the 27th it's out the game's uh, out. Oh. out out permanently but oh yeah on the 27th I will be streaming that game so uh, I will be streaming that game for as long as I feel like it and then I'll play more Civs because I've come to determine that Civs is going to be my main game it's just you know I enjoy it too much now especially since I understand a lot of the mechanics but yeah other than that's that's it <laughs> I, I mean, my, uh, this isn't game related I did go to the Bush Stadium last night uh-huh. that was my first time at a baseball stadium and, you know, I've been a Cardinals fan I was a kid, but I didn't really watch the games. I was just like, yeah, Cardinals, wear the shirts and stuff. Then I started watching the games about two years ago, and I was invited to go to the stadium, and yeah, I definitely went, and I'll definitely be going back in about a month or so, and then again before the end of the season, and I think I'll probably make that a monthly routine. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody called you a traitor yet? <laughs> Oh, I've been called a traitor. I'm constantly called oh, a traitor. Lying? Roommates. Yeah. Uh, they're always just like, yeah, you dirty traitor. Why don't you support the Cubs? And I'm just like, okay, here's a promise. If the Cubs make it to the World Series, they don't have to win. 
Celtics have to make it to the World Series. I will denounce the Cardinals and switch to the Cubs. But until then, no, no. And I'm, I have a pretty good chance I'll remain a Cardinals fan for a while because it's been 100 plus years. People have born and died of fans and never saw a victory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to lean to the Cardinals. I was never much of a baseball fanatic, but I yeah. guess in the early 90s, mid 90s, when I paid a little attention to it, the Cardinals were my team. And well, I'm not in Missouri okay. either. <laughs> I'm a long ways from St. Louis. Yeah, you're in Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's all I can think of. Yeah. I guess that's all for our show this week. Uh, follow us at Twitter at Prentycast, and you can talk to <laughs> You can. Trust me. You can contact us with email at printycast at gmail.com, and you can find the rest of our links to YouTube and Twitch channels and all of our buddies down below. And uh, any comments or ideas or suggestions, definitely let us know, and we'll catch you all next week. Goodbye.